Let's go have a look at what happened to uh, Wayne Brown. So Wayne Brown had a really big announcement. That I actually fucking, for fuck's sake, why did I do this to myself? I watched the press conference. Oh, my God. Honestly, it's did, like watching Did he throw your, a coffee cup at anyone? Or? It's just like watching your older, elderly father, like, fumble. Oh, and then, and her, hmm, and then, and then, just like, like trying to work out how to change the time on, on a clock. Honestly, it was a kind of meandering, rambling. He was saying derogatory things about other councillors. Oh, my God, it was terrible. But the actual announcement was quite important. It was about budgets. It was about, you know, Auckland's budget, what they're going to do. However, it's been completely, what were we talking about last week? And I was like, it's on a day, maybe oh, it was the dissenters, Ron DeSantis. I was like, on a day where he was announcing for president, all we could talk about was the, the terrible tech. That was the story. Yeah, It's yeah, like yeah. on a day where we should be talking about the budget, all we can talk about is this tool and his press secretary banning some of the media from coming to this. Let's have a look at the story. Yeah. Auckland Mayor Wayne Brown today outlined his saving plans as the council grapples with a big budget hole. But some major media companies weren't invited, raising questions about transparency. Logan Church reports. The mayor, due to speak, our friend how Simon's he wants here. to fix Auckland Council's yeah, well, budget woes. Simon Wilson. Okay. Hey. But some reporters, including One News, almost didn't hear him after initially being barred from attending. We did invite media who are sensible and the media who are not weren't invited and have now decided some of them to bugger off. Well, that's all right with me. Earlier, my colleague oh, had attempted to enter the meeting, but this man, Josh Van Veen, the mayor's press secretary, stopped him. When One News turned up, we were told the only media invited were those who would best convey the mayor's message. We were only <laughs> less in after negotiations with Auckland Transport's chief of staff. Afterwards, we tried to get some answers. Mr Mayor, why was only certain media invited no, we're not to talking, this? We're not talking to that. Why were you aggressive to some junior staff members at One News, Josh? I'm not doing interviews, so thank but you. But why weren't we allowed into a quite significant announcement from the mayor about wow. public funding decisions and public funds? I'm not doing interviews at the moment. You were allowed in, so... so yes, but not initially. And was that a direction from the mayor's office? It was a for a statement. There was media in there, Max. There was media what? in there. <laughs> What's that hand thing? It's so secretive about this meeting that media were not invited. In response, the Media Freedom Committee sent a strongly worded letter to the mayor, saying it's unacceptable to cherry-pick journalists based on who you think will give you the easiest ride. All of this is over big decisions, over big budget issues at Auckland Council. It needs to find hundreds of millions of dollars. The mayor's proposing to cut costs, invest in... To, to be honest, I, I was watching the press conference and I and I feel um, I feel sorry for you, Free Soul, because I can see that Free Soul said that she, Free Soul watched it too. It was just embarrassing. Oh. There were some really interesting things to kind of talk through. Like he was talking about debt. He was talking about getting debt. He was talking about budgets. At one point, I think he talked about, you know, there was $139 million operating budget and $12 million worth of debt. And I'm like, that's actually a, a pretty bloody okay ratio you know that's what that's about eight or nine percent if i only had eight or nine percent debt on my house i'd be sitting pretty sweet now to be honest i didn't delve into that perhaps like i should have because of this distraction and i don't know whether that probably shows my you know the, the lacking in me but no one's talking this is one news's lead story no one's talking about the decision they're talking about yeah. this asshole and what he did i mean it, it's kind of a given, right? You, you block one of the country's leading news outlets, they are going to make the story about it. <laughs> and that's going to be the whole thing. And therefore, you haven't accomplished what you said out, you know, oh, we, we just want the mayor to be able to say what's going on and, and it be reported fairly. And have no you, pushback. Yeah, okay. Would the best way to do that just be to have a press conference where someone doesn't take their pants off and run down the hallway like yeah. it's 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 weird like the whole thing's weird mayor brown is weird i th right? just a point a, a point of order your honor i think one of the things they tried to defend it with they said it wasn't a press conference it was an announcement for stakeholders um but of course oh, some, some oh, media were there me. and some weren't well they were in there but they were uninvited let's have a bit more of a listen to what was said in community infrastructure and a shares sell-off. There's only one way to keep rates at inflation, and that's involved selling the airport shares. 
In his speech, he also oh. dis at those who disagree with his approach. I think the undercurrents like that is not helpful, but overall I'm trying to look at what he's actually saying here, and we do need uh, a much more cost-effective council. Uh, if we want to work together, calling people out is not the way to do it. I don't recall us being in the 1950s <laughs> Mad Men episode where that has to happen. <laughs> All of this will be debated next week, and One News will be there. Maybe. Yes, indeed, and Logan's with us now live. Maybe Logan, has the Mayor's office given you a reason for only inviting selected journalists? Well, Simon, there was a response to that letter from the Media Freedoms Committee. In that email from a Mayor spokesperson, they say the event today, the speech, was not a press conference, and they did invite a select number of journalists. They also said that staff and guests were disappointed by the conduct of some media who they claim um, tried to get into the meeting. Of course, as you heard in our story, um, when we tried to get some answers from the Mayor's staff about what went down, we were unsuccessful but I think there are some bigger issues here Simon it's becoming clear that the mayor and the mayor's office are very concerned about public perception around some of these big budget issues and a lot of people would have been looking forward to hearing what the mayor had to say today and that's because a mayor has a voice around the council table and it's a strong voice a powerful one and ultimately there's a lot of money at stake here and a lot of people's lives potentially affected here in Auckland whatever the council decides so I think it's fair to say whatever your political lean what happened today wasn't great for effective local democracy so I'll show you one other thing, one other photo, and this is off Simon Wilson, who was there. We saw Simon, I think. This is off his um, Twitter feed. Uh, it says, what did that weird Merrill, Merrill meeting mean this morning? Here's Wayne Brown waving to excluded journalists, picture of courtesy of stuff, a column final for tomorrow. So this is Wayne Brown coming up to the window, like an absolute tool and going, <laughs> hello, to the people who, who he didn't let in. So you, you, you're dealing with a petulant bully teenager. I mean, mm. th I mean that's the only way I can, I can think about it. And let me just say some comments that come in. I want to respond to them straight away. Mark, how the fuck did he actually get elected, followed by Vicky? Uh, too many sensible people didn't vote. And I'll say it before, I'll say it again. And next week you might be able to buy it. If the left vote, the left win. And guess what? Guess who didn't vote in enough numbers for Ephesa Collins? The left. The West didn't Epi vote. Epi the Epi South didn't in. vote. He said today in the meeting, 180,000 Aucklanders voted for me. 1.5 million people live in that. That's like that's right. like 12% of the population voted for you. Yes, yes, you're you're entitled to be elected on that number, but it's it's not hardly a mandate for like, you know, all of Auckland wants me. But the left didn't vote. This is our warning, people. This is our warning mm. for general election. This is our warning for do you want the country to be run like the mayor of Auckland is running Auckland right now, Chewy? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's a couple of comments there, and I, I want to highlight this. I don't think that he realizes that he's one vote and that if you want yeah. things to happen on council, you've got to get people in your corner, and, it, yeah. and you don't hit that by going after them. You get them by building consensus and and that also seems to be a thing that is missing from a lot of right-wing politicians is is they can't build a consensus they can't grow that way I, I mean brown's had a hard on for selling auckland's airport shares right from the get-go since he tanked the stock numbers since yeah he, tanked he, the price. he he campaigned about it he had that you know that brain fart that affected their share price that stopped the holding. Like, it's also the worst time to sell those shares. Like, there's been massive investment in the airport to, through the COVID downturn. It's going to come back up. They're yeah. going to make dividends that way. Yeah. Like, se selling a productive asset is, is just insane. It's the gateway. It's the international gateway to the city that you run. You get a dividend... It, it's mental. Sell something that's not productive. Yeah, he was talking. Hmm. He was talking. What, what's something that you could sell that's not productive in Auckland? Hey, what, what's the going retail price for a golf course these days? Is that plug the gap? <laughs>